welcome to the 2013 Mille Miglia. This isn't really my world, the world of old cars, so I'm looking at a load of amazing metal, much of which I don't know what it is, but it's all stunning. And I suppose I have to just admit that I'm thrilled to be here and I'm driving a C-Type with uh, Al Buncombe. As you can see, I'm a bit befuddled just because of the sheer amount of machinery on display. There are apparently 422 cars entered into this event, a thousand miles driving from Brescia to Rome and back, or is it the other way around? I can't remember. It's a very special event and I, I really can't believe the cars on display. So let's have a look at some of these cars before we go out and do some driving. Can you see this according to scale? I'm not a very big man, that's not a very big car. Can you imagine or even contemplate driving this for a thousand miles? The great thing about the Mille Miglia is it encourages car companies that have a great wealth of historical cars in their archives to get them out and use them and have them seen. Mercedes-Benz is here with a load of SLs, Porsche is here with a few cars, Jaguar, the team we're with, have got about four or five cars entered, I think. There's just so much on display. This is the car we'll be driving, one of 55 C-Type Jaguars ever made. First registered keeper, a Mr. Juan Manuel Fangio. It has around 280 horsepower, weighs 900 kilograms, has drum brakes all round and uses skinny Dunlop rubber. It's a spin waiting to happen. Hey, I'm joking. Al regularly races it, winning pretty much everything he enters. For me, this is crucial. It's not a 60-year-old car being rolled out for a jolly, it's used hard and maintained well. This will pay dividends over the next thousand miles. And that is the event. A thousand miles from Brescia in the north to Rome in the south and back up to Brescia again. Immortalised by Sterling Moss's seminal 10 hours and 7 minutes time, it was the ultimate road race, but it was stopped in 1957 after two fatal crashes. Since then it's taken many forms, but from 1982 it's been run as a road rally with regularity stages. These are effectively time trials where driver and co-driver have to average very precise speeds. Sadly, they are slow speeds and, as you'll see, Al and I will struggle to understand going slowly. So it's not a race, but the thing with the Mille Miglia is it couldn't happen anywhere other than Italy. I thought I knew a bit about making time on public roads, but I was about to learn a whole lot more. The Jaguar team is basically a load of celebs and <clears throat> me. Model David Gandhi has every woman in a two mile radius giggling. Yasmin Le Bon loves her driving. Andy Wallace won Le Mans in a Jag and is a complete legend. Sir Chris Hoy is a hopeless petrol head, and I'm told that Daniel Day-Lewis is quite handy at something called acting. Strangely, myself and Al aren't asked for many interviews. Now, as many of you have been very keen to point out in the past year and a half, I don't really understand the sartorial side of life. Um, clothes, to me, are a means of staying warm, staying dry, and not exposing your bits to the rest of the public. I'm supposed to wear this, really, and no sense of irony at all, I'm supposed to drive around Italy with this on my noggin. I'm sure this has been done to keep everyone else around me amused, as have these. These are my goggles. Do I look ridiculous or do I just look like I'm driving an old racing car? I certainly feel ridiculous. <laughs> the pre-start in Brescia is in the afternoon before the actual start in the evening. It buckets down with rain, but several thousand people still mob Daniel Day-Lewis, who's driving a Jaguar XK120. That evening, we all line up on a street running into the town and wait. People casually mill in among hundreds of millions of pounds of machinery and enjoy a little sunshine.
The start is intense for the first quarter of a mile, Al giving it plenty of beans, but then it becomes a slower procession through the streets. We have two problems though. One, the trip meter isn't calibrated properly. Two, another C-type overtakes us less than five miles out of town. It won't happen again. Then it begins to rain and rain. The first regularity stage is a total shambles. We have no idea what we're doing and we're placed 400th overall. We are officially bad at going slowly and we are very proud. Later in Verona, we have a massive dice with a Porsche 550 Spider, a few million quids worth itself, brushing the tablecloths of the bars in places. Let's have a little recap of how we feel we've fared so far. So we're now sitting in Verona and we think, we think yeah. uh, we've just had a wonderful dice with a 550 Spider, which got us told off, a bit naughty, but we now know where the line lies. Absolutely. Al's been driving beautifully. Within five minutes of leaving Brescia, we had problems, didn't we? Yeah, absolutely. We unfortunately, somehow, the uh, the calibration on our trip was wrong. So we were actually, it thought we were travelling further than we were. So it was a nightmare. So we had to speak to the team and they told us how to sort it. So we but now think, we're on the right track. So we got the trip recalibrated, but then we had to sort of reset the total distance. Yeah, and find out where we were, etc. And yeah, a bit of a nightmare, but... And then there's a lot of cocking about, and then that first regularity bit, I didn't oh, have a clue what we were doing. Time trials, just a nightmare. I mean, that was our first one, obviously, but I, I I'm just, sure we'll get used to it. No, I didn't get that at all. But it's an adventure. The weather's a bit better, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to get worse. Um, We've had a, li a little rain shower. I think, I think we need to just get on and get to where we're going. Yeah. So, there you go. That's a summary. We also learn not to forget your time card at the time check because you'll need to reverse back into town to retrieve it. The rain is heavier now and the organisers abandon a load of the route, sending us down the autostrada and into Ferrara. We're an hour early for the finish, but they let us check in and head off for some kip. We'll have to be up again in five hours. That's the thing about the Mille Miglia. It's essentially for old money and wonderful cars, but it's also pretty physically demanding. We're knackered, but this will be the easiest day by far. It rains again in the morning. Is this actually Wales? Heavy grey clouds and zillion pound racing Jaguars don't mix. My goggles steam up and I have several other excuses for driving pretty cautiously. It rains so hard we can't even run a camera on the car. Everyone backs off except the Mercedes Gullwings. They just overtake everything. Either they are rich enough not to care or they have specially designed testicles. After squeezing through San Remo, the sun peeps through and I think it's the first time that Al and I realise how truly special this event is. A nation of car lovers lining the streets, endless gifts from small villages, gorgeous scenery and a car that just loves being thrashed. I sit so low in the sea type that I have to crank my neck back to peer over the wheel. It goes like stink on its short axle. Call it 6 seconds to 60 and 120 flat out. The drum brakes aren't anything like as bad as I'd feared, and the old shaped bunlocks are made from a rather snazzy modern compound, so they grip, in the dry that is. The steering is compelling, the four speed box perfect and mechanical, and the exhaust noise, well I can think of no better way of getting tinnitus. A four hour stint in the jump seat gives you a proper headache. The place names grow more romantic as we pile south. San Sepolcro, Assisi, Spoleto, 
and then Al puts some serious manners on one of the faster goal wings before we sprint into Rome. Turns out he was one of the main event sponsors. Next day, he says we're both animals. We arrive an hour and a half before our check-in time, thinking that, like the previous night, they'll just let us go through. They don't. We sit in a dark car park after a 14-hour drive in a car with no exhaust silencers and no windscreen for an hour. I thought the Millie was about driving, not waiting. Four hours sleep later, and the unruly sun drags us from the underground car park into the start of day three in Rome. Neither of us will forget this in a hurry. don't enjoy is when you get there having to wait around for an hour. We jostle our way through some stragglers in the crisp morning air, take a wrong turn almost immediately, rejoin behind all the cars we've just overtaken, rather embarrassingly, and then end up in one of those dream situations, following three other Jaguars in a police escort striking out of Rome. Blues and twos, running red lights, only in Italy. First stop is a regularity at Vallelunga Circuit, Now, neither Al or me can comprehend averaging 28 miles an hour around a track, so I pull a little drift and then stop at the next corner to get the time back. The spectators erupt with applause. Then we begin the long drag north, over 500 miles on minor roads running behind police bikes, scuffling with other horrendously valuable machines and generally living in a dream world we will never re-enter. And then, to bring us back to reality, we overtake David Coulthard in an SLR. I mean, what is this? And then we really do come down with a bump, another stuffing regularity stage and then we have to sit and wait another 45 minutes at some crappy time check At which point, I think we both realise that we need to make a decision. You cannot sit stationary in a C-type. It is morally wrong. It is now halfway through, roughly, a little bit before halfway through, the final day of the Mille Miglia. We're sitting outside a random trattoria somewhere in Italy. I couldn't tell you where we are. Um, Al and I have reached a realisation. I call it a eureka moment. This event is amazing, like that. We've experienced things that I thought I'd never experienced. You know, being led out of Rome, flat chat, in a convoy of million pound cars, following a policeman who's behaving more irresponsibly in town than I've ever seen another driver, is something I won't forget. It's amazing, it's bucket list stuff. The car's amazing, the country's amazing, the route's amazing. There is but one problem, isn't there? That little thing. Yeah, this is called a road book. And this dominates us. This is today's route, okay? There's lots and lots of it. And do you know what? It kind of gets in the way of the driving and you've got to meet checkpoints and timings and... Yeah. There comes a point where you think to yourself, I don't want to get somewhere and wait an hour to finish it. Now, maybe I'm being a bad sport, but what do you think we do with that from now on? Been over there. We're just going to drive to Brescia, which is about 500 kilometres away, really fast, get involved in a load of dices with other very, very valuable cars and have ourselves a wicked time. Now we're in business. 
We need to make time. We don't care about the timing, and we're about to enjoy a full police escort through Bologna. We slice through its gridlock centre and onto a place called Marinella, through a factory called Ferrari, and onto a circuit called Fiorano. I'm banned from being here, so Al drives. I lower the peak of my cap, and he executes a large skid on the final corner. The marshals clap. The run back into Brescia is perhaps the best road drive of my life. We follow a Ferrari 250mm as fast as I can drive in the conditions after 15 hours behind the wheel. The car feels stronger than ever, but it's dark so we have no video footage at all. But a bit of me likes that. It's a memory that Al and I will share forever. When we roll across the finish line, we are toast, ruined and ecstatic. Grazie mille! Thank you very much. How was that? The last hour was absolutely <laughs> superb. We had a that little one, the 250 mm, and we stayed with him for an hour, and we were. I was dying for a piss, so I wanted to stop. I knew he'd get pissy, so I didn't bother to mention it. Mate, it was honestly, when he left us, I was. Now that it is absolutely on the money. Stay there. That's awesome. You beat me to it, but. Right, I want to just, before we leave this car, it's amazing, when you drive something for 15 hours, we've been in this car 15 hours ago, we had an hour's lunch, you do generate something of a bond with it, and, and it's impossible to describe the amount of detritus in here, but we're so snug, we've got everything we need and a few things that we don't. Yeah. And tomorrow morning, I think the best thing to do tomorrow morning is we're not going to get the car washed, we're going to get up, go downstairs to the garage and talk you around how we used it, where everything went, and why it's so special. I'm going to go and drink so much beer that I suspect I might wet the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and this was the morning after the night before. What a machine. 1,000 miles flat out. And all we broke was a spoke. The Minamilia isn't a race. It's an experience. <laughs>